Hello, hello, hello. Um, if you saw my story from earlier, uh, we got our final behind the scenes look at an LP, a licensed producer here in Canada, Whistler Medical Marijuana Corporation from, you guessed it, from Whistler. Um, a few shout outs as always. I got my trusty ashtray here from Fashionably High. Got the beautiful mug as well, the cup. I, I, I can't say enough about, uh, about Fashionably High, so I just encourage anybody and everybody to check them out again. Use the matchstick, uh, capital, all caps, matchstick will get you 10% discount on her wares. And they're absolutely gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming. My mother is going to get six of these. My sister is going to get six of these. I don't understand why, uh, well, I mean, some of my buddies back home are going to get six of these. These are beautiful. Um, I think we can all appreciate that. So fashionably high. Gift season, whatever. It's coming. I was going to smoke one of these, but uh, I'm actually going to tackle something that we picked up over at the Village Bloomery. Um, so we're going to say that uh, the Village Bloomery is not sponsoring this one, but they certainly do play a big role. Um, what's interesting, too, is we're going to be reviewing, as I said, the Whistler uh, Medical Marijuana. And that's going to be in, uh, in comparison to some very high quality, if not some of the highest quality cannabis available in Canada. Um, Village Bloomery. Listen to this, everybody. That's fucking glass. That's glass. You know what? And, and glass is the best possible. And it's amber glass at that. Um, so the game is, uh, is being stepped up here by our friends over at Village Bloomery. Thank you guys for being who you are and doing all you do. Sounds as though they're going to be staying open regardless as of October 17th and onwards. So as far as prohibition is concerned, um, I don't think we have too much to worry about. Uh, or post-prohibition, we don't have too much to worry about losing the Village Bloomery. Um, definitely go and support them. They are pretty much, hands down, they're pretty much the best. They are the best dispensary in Vancouver, which means they are the best dispensary in Canada. And to me, that suggests that you're probably the best dispensary in the world. There's some really beautiful ones out there and we're going to be uh, seeing dispensaries being mixed in with retail. Um, we're trying to call them retail stores now because that's really their, uh, the route they're taking. With that being said though, Vancouver has a very rich history with cannabis obviously as well as storefronts and those storefronts being called dispensaries. So it's going to take a little bit of time before that uh, vernacular is worked out and quite frankly as I was having a great discussion with a great friend of mine or new friend of mine thanks to cannabis tonight that uh, I don't necessarily know we need to start reframing our language and certainly I don't want to be reframing our culture according to some perception of somebody outside of our culture. I think I chatted about this the last time. I'm ranting a little bit here. Let's get started because I want to have a... Okay, Fire and Flower. I got a post of these guys up. I had a little behind-the-scenes look at their dispensary over the weekend and thanks over Thanksgiving in Edmonton. That's where I'm from, born and raised. Um, a good buddy of mine works with that group. Truly uh, passionate about cannabis, this, this group. Um, uh, folks that you can trust anyways, at the end of the day. Uh, we're all going to be getting LP cannabis, or all of the retail outlets will be getting LP cannabis, for the most part, outside of Vancouver, where there is going to be this gray area of gray areas, getting rid of what uh, is left over. So, um, But with that being said, as far as the new age of dispensaries or retail outlet goes, I am a big fan of Fire and Flower. I think they have your best interests at heart. Uh, these guys know what they're talking about, and quite frankly, I got high with them. So that's a good fucking sign, people. That's a great way to vet people in this industry. Do you smoke? What's your relationship with cannabis? If I get high with somebody, there's a 95% chance that we're going to trust one another moving forward. So stop ranting. Take a sip of water. Wildlife Cannabis. Perhaps the nicest branding on, I don't know, anything right now. <laughs> anything but uh, it's branding on pre-rolls uh, there's five beautiful pre-rolls in each one of these packages now they're they're king size pre-rolls that's a big fucking bat you got going there so when I, I tell you it's 50 bucks for one of these boxes well don't let it shake you it is worth ten dollars that joint the cannabis is absolutely phenomenal um, the effects are phenomenal the branding is phenomenal and they package with it one glass tube 
with a cork in it. Stick a cork in it. Um, it keeps it fresh, but it also too minimizes waste. This is what I thought was, oop, was really cool. It was the fact that they came with one container and the rest were just as is, as you saw here. Now that minimizes waste, and that's kind of huge because uh, right now with every pack of pre-rolls, I'm throwing away three, five, ten plastic tubes at a time. If I can just get one to go, um, I understand from a humidity control perspective, drying out, that might not be ideal, but at the end of the day, we need to start learning out how we can best balance this uh, with the environment as our backdrop. Again, don't want to get too preachy, but uh, we got to be conscious of this stuff. Let's see what's going on out there, guys. Oh, oh, you stop. Hoo, hoo. Get to finally meet Toke Bucks. Um, Dab Man Darren, I don't know who you are, but, uh, or do I? I hope so. I hope we've met at some point. If you haven't met Toke Box, oh, chances are you may not have met me. Uh, we all kind of roll at the same events here in Vancouver. So, um, oh, Hemp Fest in Calgary this weekend. Oh, yeah, it's not Hemp Fest I'm coming for. I think I'm going to be in Calgary for the Lyft Conference. So, if anybody's there for that, hey, Daryl, man, what's going on, brother? What is going on? All right, let's get into this a bit. I was going to spin one up, and it's taken me forever to get at this, so I might just uh, get down to business here. Um, token naturals, or excuse me, token bitters. We're going to get to this in a later post, but uh, follow these guys. Uh, follow this group. They're going places. There's some really, really cool shit going on. They're also, I guess, thematically, a lot of this... Uh, uh, is born from Edmonton anyways, or at least my visit this past weekend. So to keep things on that Edmonton, uh, on that token Edmonton, well, here's token uh, bitters. And keep an eye out for token naturals. Uh, really, really cool shit happening there. All right. So uh, in addition to Village Bloomer, we went to Buddha Barn as well. I saw this beautiful nug, and I got so much fucking cannabis right now at home, it's not even funny. Well, it's not at home yet. I still got to wait for a delivery from Top Leaf, but that's because I need to connect directly with those guys and find out what the hell's going on. So here's this beautiful nug in here, right? I got all aroused when I saw this fucking thing. And I'm standing there, and I'm, I'm like, okay, what is this? Uh, oh, it, it's legalized. What the hell is legalized? It's LSD. What is LSD? Your predominant terpene on that one should be citrus, should be something lemony, should be a little bit sour. Um, I, I don't need cannabis, but I swore to the folks at Buddha Bar, and I swore to Buddha, I said, I said, if that stuff smells like fucking lemons, or at least has that sour smell to it, I'm getting that nug. And indeed it did, and it was wonderful. It, uh, and, and that's the thing, with LSD, a lot of it was floating around the past few months, and the dominant terpene profile on, uh, on, excuse me, LSD, did I call it limonene? On LSD, <laughs> holy shit. Okay. Now we're, now we're talking. See, I don't know, you just simply don't get stuff like this on certain sides of the fence. And I don't know, well, I mean, I do know why. There's an issue with scalability right now. And when we say scalability, scaling up, that means taking something that works in a small little environment like a craft or micro grower and extending that out to one million square feet. Um, scalability is, is tough. It's tough, and the evidence is, is glaring, unfortunately, from the standpoint that we have beautiful fucking nugs like this, and this is just rich, just rich, and I can't wait to bust it up. I'm, I'm not smoking this one tonight, but uh, the guy upsold me. It was about, this is, this is about 6.3 grams. He's like, should we just bump her up to seven? I'm like, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, we will. So anyways, they knocked it out of the park with the terpene profile. For the, I mean, at least from the dominant, the predominant terpene in this should be lemon. It shouldn't be cushy. It shouldn't be earthy. That comes along with it. But they knocked it out of the park. At nine bucks a gram, sold, done. So we got that big ass nug I wanted to show you guys. Um, Space Queen. Space Queen. Um, this one is now from Village Bloomery. Oh, God. There's sour, there's some kind of fruity notes in there. And again, oh, fuck. I've missed you, good cannabis, I've missed you. All right. Just, it's a terpene profiles on this. I, you guys can't really see too, too much about this, or too, too far in there, but at the very least, you got something, some colors, some greens. The terps on this are fucking beautiful. This one is Space Queen. Oh my god, finally. And I mean, I haven't even busted these up. I haven't even squished them. The monoterpenes are just fucking flying off this thing. Flying off this motherfucker. So good. But the one that I've been wanting to smoke and bust up is this Sunshine Blue Dream. 
Anybody out there big into essential oils or anything like that? Can anybody relate to what a uh, sweet India basil essential oil smells like? It's very peppery. It's very sharp. It's very licorice as well. There's a, a, a anise, a fennel smell to it. Whew. Getting excited here. Oh my fucking god. This is unbelievable. I'm so, so impressed. Mmm. Oh my God. So this literally, when you get the first pull on this, um, if you ever do get a chance to smell sweet India basil essential oil, this is, that's what the predominant, oh, but it's peppery too. It's so fucking magical, this stuff. Oh my God. And this again, isn't even busted up. This one, uh, big shout out to uh, my boy Rian over at Village Bloomery, who nabbed this one off the shelf and knew exactly what the fuck I was talking about when I went in there and started asking for dank, for sour, for uh, stinky, cheesy. He knew what to grab. He knew what to go for. These people are fucking educated. They're, they care about what they're doing. They've managed to hire people that have a passion for cannabis. How could you fucking hire anybody as a bud tender that isn't passionate about cannabis? How do you get some bonehead in there that doesn't come to work every day and stick his fucking face or her fucking face inside every goddamn jar on the shelf? Excuse my language, but seriously, if I was afforded that opportunity at their age, I suppose, I guess there's some older bud tenders, but what I've seen that has disappointed me has been in that 20 to 25 year old range that you just don't give a shit about it, man, but like care. When I come in and ask for sour, I want you fucking grabbing the lemon hazes off the wall. I want you grabbing an LSD. I want you knowing what I'm talking about. These guys do. Rian does. Jeremy does. Andrea does. Everybody at Village Bloomery knows what the fuck they're talking about. And if they don't, they're not going to pretend they do. But these guys are fucking omakase. You tell them what you want and they will figure it out. These guys know their stuff. So I can't say enough about the Village Bloomery. Am I ever going to actually get to the Whistler Cannabis? I do want, mm, 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 I do want to smoke this stuff. I do want to bust this stuff up, and you guys deserve to see what my face looks like once we do bust this up. And I get my nose in there. Anybody tried Sunshine Blue Dream from uh, Village Bloomery? And I believe this one comes from the Sunshine Coast Collective of Growers. So. Um, I don't think there's an actual specific farm that I can mention or that they could mention, but it came from the Sunshine Coast. It's Sunshine, again, Sunshine Blue Dream. So I think that uh, is a collective of growers out there, and let's be fucking honest, that's where some of the best cannabis has come from and continues to come from, and this terpene profile is out of this world. Shit, it just fucking breaks my heart. We're going, sorry guys, I gotta tap this shit out. This is just my uh, my ritual here. Oh my God, just like it's, it's, it's layered, it's exciting, it's a sophisticated bouquet. Like, you know what? I love wine, I love, uh, well, I don't love wine. I used to love wine. It was more I love wine enthusiasts because a lot of my friends are really into that or were into that. I was in pharmaceutical sales at one point, but fuck you guys. You want to talk tannins, you want to talk, you want to talk uh, bouquets and notes, you talk terpenes, talk terpy to me, man. Fuck your tannins, fuck your red wines, fuck your jammy notes. This shit smells and smells fantastic. Dear God, I've never wanted to live inside plants more than I do ever since I've realized what terpenes are. Oh, and how they make me feel. Okay. What's everybody smoking on tonight? Help me out here. I talk so goddamn much sometimes. Let's sit down and spin one together. Let me know what you're spinning up right now. Go grab your rolling papers. Go grab your kit. Where are y'all hailing from too? Do we have anybody up late tonight in Toronto? A little Thursday night party going on? It's totally all about passion. Damn straight dab man Darren. Damn straight dab man Darren. Everybody say that. Say that fast. It's not easy. Damn skippy dab man, Darren. Damn skippy dab man, Darren. All right. Working. Working. Well, unless you work for the RCMP, you should be able to fucking smoke your brains out in about six days' time. 
depending on where in the country, a few hours, less than six days time, five days, I, I, I'm losing count. Is anybody expecting a massive shift waking up on October 17th and like the world is going to smell different? Well, it might smell different, but uh, is the world going to be different for you guys? Is your world going to change on October 17th? How's it, how's it going to change? I don't know that mine is going to change too much simply because I bought an excessive amount of cannabis from both Top Leaf. I have some from Kootenai Craft, which may, may, might I recommend um, as being perhaps one of the finest, finest bits of cannabis that I've received in a long time. But with that being said, to celebrate October 17th in my household or celebrate anything in my household, you don't, ugh, these damn gloves. You know what? Craig X, I need to tell you, man, you know what? I kind of, I, I kind of led you astray there when I was on Expert Joints. Um, these gloves actually do impede rolling quite a bit. I mean, yeah, you can, I talked about how they can kind of help you get a little bit of sticky finger on the, the paper itself, but dude, it, it looks the same as I did when I was with you. You see that, man? You see that pregnant pause that I was talking about? Um, if you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Craig X. Craig X is the uh, host of Expert Joints here in Vancouver. Um, this man is connected like nobody's business on, in our community. Um, and he's just a rad guy to kind of hang out with and learn from and chat with and whatnot. But uh, I was on his show a couple weeks back and I, I rolled a disappointingly... Oh man, amateur hour. I rolled a disappointingly not so attractive joint. So it was... Uh, like I say, I had to, I had to kind of tail between my leg it and just sort of suck it up. Thank God, Todd, thank you for not uh, going in deep and close on that joint. It kind of passed off when I actually saw it again, like I knew what I was doing. But, uh, but the gloves do impede. They do impede. I'm not going to lie. Six people. Jesus, man, I'm famous. <laughs> hey, Doomer. Oh, sorry. I'm just reading off this stuff. Uh, you can... Do Marie, we should uh, we should sit. Well, no, you you know who Craig X is. I, were you at that one with me? I can't even remember. That was uh, there's been so many events at grassroots. I can't remember the last time. No, it was a high tea. I believe I saw you at Do Marie. Um, everybody should be able to learn how to roll joints. It just takes a little bit of practice. Um, first, well, not first joint I rolled. I'm sure that was pretty ugly. But uh, the, my my best friend back in Edmonton, still to this day, I met because I was uh, shaving down erasers and into eraser dust on my desk in my English, uh, grade 11 English class. And he came over and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I'm practicing. And I pulled out my rolling papers and I started rolling for him. And he's like, hell yeah. And he's like, no, here's how you gotta do it. And I'm like, fuck. Friends forever, friends for life. You know, I broke my own rule here. I didn't kind of tug on it to see what the terps were like over my uh, over my palate, but I'm just so fucking happy because I know this is brilliant cannabis. It tastes great. So, what say we start digging into Whistler cannabis? All right. Um, not that I got burned, but I got burned. I mean, by comparison to what I'm getting at the craft level, you're getting burned almost at all all turns, all corners with LP cannabis. Um, but with that being said, there is some LP cannabis that is better than others. I'm going to be going into a lot more detail on that, so keep an eye on my actual feed. We're going to be doing a little bit more interactive videos on that thing and a little bit less of the flat lays. Things are changing a little bit as we move into October 17th. I think it's a lot more important to get a message out that is actually uh, being heard versus just pretty pictures and whatnot. So pretty pictures will still be part of it. Okay, uh, pretty pictures will still be part of it, but uh, for the most part, we're going to start shifting more to an educational platform and also to uh, respecting the uh, legal regulation from a promotional standpoint. So I'm going to have to figure that out with some fellow influencers of mine as to exactly what we can and can't promote legally, because um, the last thing I'd want to be doing is not broadcasting from jail. Mm-hmm. So Whistler Medical, they're uh, really, truly medical. They're not fucking around. It looks like a prescription. This is probably makes it very accessible for some people. Uh, for me, I don't really care as long as the cannabis is in good condition and good quality. Second to that, they've given me a Boveda pack. What is this? A uh, little 
one gram or whatnot. We're at 58%. Okay, Whistler, I do prefer 62% or is it 64? Anyways, it's uh, it's late. It's been a long day, but uh, higher humidity I prefer myself, but uh, I'm not going to shit on anybody that sends me Boveda with my cannabis. And uh, shaking this cannabis, yeah, you know what? Everybody that's told me that Whistler Medical Marijuana is likely better than others is probably correct. And the reason being, I can, like, uh, can you hear that? What that sounds like to me is that what's banging against the walls of those hard plastic containers is something that has actually got some humidity still in it. Um, the humidity is, or the humidity control isn't and wasn't inside these boxes or these containers, so that suggests to me that this was probably packaged fairly recently. Packaged on September 11th, so maybe the packaging itself is, is better in some ways of keeping the, hold on here. Yeah, no, we're getting the same there. Yeah, and that one actually sounds dense still. It doesn't sound like little pebbles like I'm used to with a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of. And this was September 28th, so that's pretty fucking rad. Good on you, Whistler. As far as an LP is concerned, it seems like it's medical marijuana, unfortunately. So I don't really know if Whistler's going to be available in stores. If somebody can let me know, that would be great. Um, rolling a joint should be a prerequisite. I'm not going to shit on anybody that can't roll a joint. At the end of the day, I've got probably... 50,000 of these things under my belt at this point from my own use, well, mostly my own use and then helping others, but uh, but absolutely, it's kind of like scuba diving. You know, you don't need to swim to, to know, you don't need to know how to swim to scuba dive, but it's probably a good fucking idea that you do, or at least, you know, be able to swim your ass to shore. Same goes with a joint, at least be able to, you know, jimmy rig something, um, something enough to, you know, get her down. Okay. Oh, she's going out. Okay, to hell with that, team. We're going to uh, dig right in here. So, we've got a Bubba Kush. I know what a Bubba Kush is supposed to smell like. I mean, I know generally what all of these are supposed to smell like. This is a strawberry short cookies. <sighs> okay, all right. Um, I should have done a little background research on that one. Not, I'm getting a good little buzz off of that. And a grapefruit strain. I've had grapefruit before that I've loved. I've had, I mean, a variety of strawberries. I'm very curious. I'm going to save the Kush for the end. That's going to be that kind of dark, earthy, deeper sort of uh, cushy sort of smell. Now, let's start with then the strawberry short cookies. We've got 16.4 THC, um, less than 0.05% CBD. Um, and there's nothing else on there. The terpene profile isn't presented. I'm sure if I went on, I, and I know if I go online, I can find it. It would really actually be nice on a label. I understand that naive users and naive patients don't really give a shit about that, but uh, a lot of us do. If it doesn't cost you much to put that on the label, then, uh, then by all means, don't think we're going to uh, shit on you for including it. All right, let's get in there. This is the last opening we're going to have here. Yeah, you know what? Whistler. Okay. Yeah, there's terps on there. The monoterpenes are there. This is organic cannabis. Hold on, my eyes kind of go sometimes with all the white around here. Um, the trim is pretty clean. There's a lot of red hairs on there. Um, there is a nice deep earthy sort of cushy smell to it. It's not cush, but it's bordering. I mean, there's certainly, certainly stronger terpene profiles, but I mean, Jesus Christ, for a, uh, an LP, like this is a pace setter next to Broken Coast. Um, and I'm going to have to place another order with those guys, I suspect, just to assess whether or not their quality truly has gone down. But I, if it hasn't gone down to the extent that people have said it has, um, Broken Coast is still the leader. I would say this is probably up with the, uh, I'm going to save it for my, uh, my feed. I'm, and I'm going to apologize to you guys now. There's going to be some stuff revealed here that is not really going to, it's not going to be ideal for everybody. Not, you, you guys aren't going to want to hear what the best cannabis is from a terpene perspective, from a, uh, an outcomes perspective. As far as things stand today, um, there's a lot of people that are going to be pretty pissed off 
knowing that that is the best cannabis you're going to be able to get and where it's coming from. Um, the one important thing I think we all need to remember in all of this is that no matter where you're getting your cannabis from and no matter who's producing it, whether it's shitty cannabis produced by really good people, whether it's really good cannabis produced by perceivingly shitty people. Um, yeah, you know what? There's assholes that come in every color. There's assholes that come in every industry. You're going to find them and, uh, you know, do your best just to sniff them out and keep them away from you at the end of the day. But don't at the sake of, of, uh, alienating or ignoring the good people on those sides of the fence or on that side of the fence. There are some phenomenal people that have been with us since the start. Some people that have uh, basically got this movement going and, and got us to where we are today. And they're working with some of the, uh, the behemoths, the whales, the biggest, the biggest providers out there. Um, and the fact that they are with those folks suggests to me that uh, these companies at the root, yes, perhaps, you know, capitalism, if you want to strip it all down to that, we can have a moral or ethical debate about that. But at the end of the day, like anything, you can't paint everything with the same brush and the same goes for LPs uh, Whistler for instance is doing a pretty goddamn good job and I'm gonna hand it to them um, they they sent humidity control they sent me cannabis with with terp with terpene profiles that I can smell immediately um, they didn't send me something that looked to be too spun out in a fucking tumble dryer of some you know dried improperly or tumbled improperly um, but hold on here Yeah, okay, so, miss. By comparison to the first one, this is a miss. Short cookies, Dumere, strawberry short cookies. Yeah, you know what, it's not so bad. They did uh, They did a pretty good job on that one. Um, this one, I'm not so sure they did. Well, no, it just it looks kind of pretty. It, it looks like a, uh, like a tangelope almost, which I guess would kind of make sense, being a grapefruit, but... Yeah, no, fuck it. Terps are not here. The Terps are not here. What is this? Is this the one that was packaged? Package. This was packaged on September 24th. Are you fucking kidding me, guys? Give me a second here. Okay. Um, come on over here. Sunshine Blue Dream. Got a girl. Yoink. Give me a second. Going down. Back up. I do not want that stuff drying out. Let's respect the really good stuff here. Gonna bust this now. Let's just see what the fuck is going on. Because I'm not, I'm picking up the same old shit that I picked up off of a lot of other, and you know what, before we go doing that, why don't we dig in, yeah, this is, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I mean, it's not bad cannabis from what I can tell, but the Terps are, are not doing it. Hold on. Let's bust her up and see. Let's bust her up and see. Maybe I'm being, you know, I'm picking up something. Again, this is better than 90% of the LP cannabis out there from what I've heard and also from what I've tried. I believe there's 10 of them. I thought of doing a, uh, doing a shout out to any of the craft producers that haven't quite made it onto the legal framework that if you want to be uh, compared to one of these strains, why don't you send me a uh, send me a gram or two of your uh, of your best, and I'll do a little opening of that next to some LP strains. And as we get it past October seventeenth, I'll be doing a side by side comparison with a lot, anyways. Big shout out to CE underscore head office. I'm expecting a package from you guys fairly soon. I really hope it comes in before the weekend. Uh, this stuff is almost, in fact, probably untouchable by every standard. Um, this has been vetted from other people as well. You get a lot of butthurt people on Reddit that kind of criticize CE. But when you talk to people that actually know what they're talking about, it is fucking phenomenal cannabis to the point that uh, it's worth the, what the hell is it, the $365 ounce that you would uh, you would be spending um, on their boutique cannabis. It's fucking worth it. Go check them out, CE underscore head office. Um, you're, it's expensive and it is the best. It's expensive for a reason. There's no discount codes. There's not even a fucking web interface. It's a, 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 a page of, of text and you order and it's very cryptic and clandestine and it's awesome. Anyways, what the hell are we doing here? We are busting something. Sorry for the tapping. Okay, you know,
it's it's not so bad. It's not so bad. And again, 90%, if this is in the top 10th percentile, this is in the top 10th percentile. It's not blowing my mind, but you know what? It's I, I'd be a little disappointed if this showed up. It feels just a little outdoorsy almost. This one looks like it's giving me the fucking finger or something. Like, yeah, up yours too, buddy. Up yours too. Um, fuck prohibition, I think is what this guy's saying. Fuck it. Fuck it. Find him in the stores. Um, yeah, you know what? Upon further busting, this shit is all right. It's all right. I'm going to, uh, I will look forward to, to smoking that. Um, oops, got to get my humidity control in there. Okay, Whistler, you know what? You're not even on Instagram, so fuck it. What's it matter anyways? But literally, this is for you guys out there. Um, if you find Whistler, if Whistler Medical is available out there, which I highly doubt it's going to be from a recreational slash adult use perspective, um... I guess perhaps I'm just, yeah, blowing smoke up everybody's ass here. I mean, I hope that this is available because literally, if you see Whistler out there, think Matchstick, think fucking warnings that are coming this week, and think Whistler was one of two that he recommended hands down would at least meet a basic standard that you've come to expect from the craft side, that we've all come to expect. Um, strawberry again, very nice, it's... it's it's there. It's there. This is, you know, and, and it's not going to be as there as a lot of the shit that you guys have been have been trying if you're not part of the LP system, if you're used to using moms or you're used to moms being mail order marijuana, online dispensaries or Vancouver dispensaries and a good Vancouver dispensary, nothing on Granville. I'm pretty sure nothing in Gastown except there's one across the street from Cannabis Culture and uh, and New Amsterdam Cafe that uh, I went into that was was really nice. But anyways, that's not what this is about. Um, let's get into, what is this one? The Bubba Kush. So we all generally know what Kush is supposed to smell like. I'm expecting this one to knock me on my ass a little bit from both a smell terpene perspective as well as just an effects perspective. From the people that I've engaged on Reddit and other forums, they told me that the Bubba Kush is one of their favorites. They weren't sure sure about the other two. For so so for those of you that had made those comments to me, strawberry short cookies, uh, definitely a good option. And even the grapefruit, it's got some sour notes on there. Um, and again, unless you're ordering from anybody else but Whistler and Broken Coast, um, this stuff is going to. Well, yeah, no. If you're ordering from anybody else, this is always going to trump it. This is going to trump it. So, Bubba Kush. Let's see what we go. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you're, we're doing all right here. We're doing all right. Whistler, I mean, you've had uh, a little bit of time to make this work. It is organic, all of it. I don't know if that makes a difference from the actual outcomes. This seems a little, again, outdoorsy. Um, I don't think it is though. I suspect it is still indoor. The actual density inside of the nugget is fine. They're just kind of lighter on the, uh, lighter in the, uh, in the foot or, or oh, what the fuck was that? Um, me and my lids today, but yeah, we're definitely getting the Kush Terps off of this and I'm going to bust this up as well. Normally I don't bust up a, uh, an Indica with a Sativa. The grapefruit is such a sour, a sour profile. I don't like really combining the two, but this should dominate and overpower it here at the uh, at the Bubba Kush level. All right, Bubba Kush, what we got here, buddy? What you got here, buddy? Let's break this motherfucker. Yeah, so she's pretty dense, but from a little tidbit that I again learned this past weekend while I was visiting with one of our, um, I would say one of our top licensed producers they only um, I shouldn't talk about giving them away I don't want to out anybody but at the end of the day I found some very passionate people in Alberta it's not Aurora it's not to say that there aren't passionate people there because I spoke with somebody from Aurora the other day who has a richer relationship with cannabis than I do his family has a richer relationship with cannabis than I do and he's an individual that's working for one of the behemoths. So again, going back to what I was saying before, there is no painting everybody with the same brush in this industry right now because I know that some of you do don't you do dislike Aurora. And fair enough, for whatever reasons you have your reasons. I don't say I'm not saying I dislike them or like them. I'm not really providing a commentary on that. I'm simply providing a commentary on the fact that there's good people everywhere. So let's at least keep ourselves an open mind. Protect yourselves, absolutely. Look to other people that have this experience. Ask questions if you feel that you might be being exploited. 
Definitely ask questions before you go and get yourself an O. Henry 425 bar. I don't know that I'm alone in feeling that this is somewhat offensive to our culture or whatnot, but I just, I don't really like people from the outside, like a candy bar that just makes general assumptions, especially so far before um, legalization or the regulations even came down to start promoting this 425 candy bar to me like... You know, hey man, we we get you cool, cool, all right, groovy. You know, it's like I don't know. That's how I feel about it. It's like, hey dude, where the fuck do you come from, Henry? You don't belong here. Your name's not on the guest list, Henry. Fuck off. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's rude. I do like a good O O Henry. I like a little uh, nougat here and there too. I like a little nougat. So yeah, you know what? I'm going to give Whistler like fucking three thumbs up as far as an LP is concerned because the only person that they can really sit next to on this throne is Broken Coast. There is nothing else out there from what I've gathered, what I've smoked that is ever going to compete with these two. So this is your be all and your end all here. Cannabis begins and ends with Whistler and Broken Coast in Canada. Whistler Medical is highly unlikely, pun intended, to actually be on the shelves as Whistler Medicals. So let us do some research and find out exactly what they're going to be sold as and if they're going to be sold. Because if they're not, if they're not, we are now limited. We are now limited to Broken Coast being retailed in, in our stores. Now, they're talking about a cannabis shortage happening. That there's going to be a cannabis shortage happening after legalization. And that makes sense. That makes sense. I think they've highly underestimated uh, the number of people that smoke cannabis in this country, and they've highly underestimated the number of experienced cannabis users or aficionados or enthusiasts out there. So they say there's going to be a shortage. Now, if there's a shortage of... There's already a shortage, I'll tell you that much. There's a shortage of quality cannabis out there. There's a, a massive shortage. It's a, there's a drain right now. Um, I mean, there's no shortage, obviously. The black market is going to fill that vacuum. But this is kind of where everything falls apart as far as quality is concerned. The first people... Here's my theory. Here's my theory, everybody. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready? My theory is this. October 17th is going to come. And we're going to have a limited number of stores. And these stores aren't going to be flooded with people that have been waiting for legalization. It's not like the, the naive users are all just going to pick themselves up on the morning of October 17th and go get fucking high on their way to work. I would, suggest, I, would, I would think, too, that even after work, these people are not the ones that are going to be going. The people that are going to be going to these dispensaries, retail outlets, excuse me, they're going to be experienced users. They're going to be connoisseurs. It's going to be people like you and me or those that probably don't live in Vancouver that haven't had an opportunity to access cannabis to, to such an extent where it's actually a retail environment. Um, and people even in Vancouver, I mean, again, knowing full well that they're not going to be licensed and open, we're still going to have ours here. So for those around the country that are getting dispensaries as something brand new to them, um, it's not going to be the new naive user that says, hey, it's illegal, let's go get high finally. Finally, Justin Trudeau's not going to kick my door down. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's going to be us. And we're going to get to those stores, and we're going to crack most of this stuff, except for the lucky sons of bitches that go in and grab Broken Coast or Whistler. And the rest of us are going to start ripping shit off the shelf and being a little what the fuck here, man. And there's not going to be any returns. You're not going to be able to exchange this stuff. Um, and the, the problem is that you are also going to be the voice for this new industry. We are going to be the voice for this new industry. And the voice is unfortunately going to be saying to most people that are naive users that this is shit. This is shit. This isn't what we've come to expect. This isn't, uh, this isn't craft cannabis. This isn't the stuff on the shelves at Village Bloomery. Okay, now with that being said, with that being said, there is stuff that has been on their shelves and that is bleeding out now. In, as we approach uh, October 17th and beyond, it'll still be available until it's not available, essentially, until it's sold out. But there are some, some excellent growers that are on that wall there that have now actually been picked up by LPs. And again, LPs that you don't want me saying the name of, but it's going to be in my reviews and my, my posts this upcoming week. That, uh, again, good people have landed in places that we have been calling bad for quite some time. And these organizations have grown. And they've grown to such an extent that it's not just assholes from, excuse my term, but assholes from Bay Street and Wall Street that are running because they know how to make some money off of this. 
Um, there's some passionate growers that are working and trying to make this a better environment for us. And we can't be sitting here stopping these good people from making these positive changes for the rest of us. So they're not sellouts. I, uh, is, is basically what I'm saying. They're not sellouts they're, and they're going to be heroes at the end of the day. With that being said, tune in later on this week. You're going to see all of this online. Um, so shortage on weed. Let's, let's tie this all in here. There's going to be a shortage on weed. Supply isn't going to meet demand. Supply already isn't meeting demand because we don't have quality cannabis. And those of us in the know are going to be the first ones to these stores to pick up said cannabis. And we're going to say, this isn't what my guy brought me. Um, I hope it's not what your guy brought you because if, if he's been bringing you what the majority of this stuff is, I'd suggest calling him one last time and, uh, and having a word with him, a stern word with him because, yeah, you're not, uh, chances are you're probably getting better stuff from some kid with a backpack on a bicycle. Um, you're probably, you're definitely getting stuff if you're ordering from any of the reputable moms that uh, Reddit will advocate for or myself that I will advocate for, Village Bloomery being one, Buddha Barn being another. Um, Lotus Land was another one that we visited as well. I got myself a nice little apothecary iced tea there. Um, what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that we're, uh, we're in for some slim pickings. There's going to be some interesting roundabout ways. The black market is going to thrive still. In fact, it's probably going to grow even bigger than it was before simply because there's, or at least for the few players that are left. Um, again, it's not the few players that are left. There's still a lot of them out there. Um, it's going to be a heyday. The sun is shining right now because they know that they are the ones that have access to great, phenomenal, the best cannabis in Canada. And the rest of us are basically fighting over the, the palate that has the uh, the Broken Coast order on it. And that's that's not cool. Um, stay tuned, everybody. Um, I hope you guys have a great uh, weekend coming up. I don't think I'm going to be able to do another. Well, I might do another one of these tomorrow night. I really want to bang a few out. But uh, like I say, keep an eye on the actual feed itself. I'm going to be doing more live one-minute snippets. And we're going to do some reviews there. On my story, I've asked you guys to, uh, to contribute to what do you want me to use as an evaluation scale or not a tool, but how do you want me to evaluate the LP cannabis and the LPs in general? Um, go to my story, find that that post and let me know I do want your contribution I want to know that I'm giving you the information that you're looking for um, tune in later on and we're going to uh, keep this party going so T minus five days and counting I guess everybody uh, happy final week of the gray area era terror how are you nice to see you A little sprout there you betcha uh, let's do one last scan over here before I say uh before I say good night, hey, role models, nice to see you guys. How are you? Sorry, I'm rolling my own right now, but uh, just a little lackluster. Um, so, yeah, I think I got through the review of the actual uh, cannabis itself. Um, Whistler, you're doing all right. You're doing great. Um, late night sesh, yeah, they're all late night seshes. They're all late nights these days. I think young people my age are going to flood those stores. Chris, as long as you are 18 plus... I, I want you flooding my feed, all right? But uh, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people flooding the stores, but it's going to be people that are experienced users, right? Or experienced cannabis enthusiasts or people that just kind of have been around the block. And I don't know, man. You tell me. Definitely, uh, definitely en envy Chris. I want you to feed uh, feed me your, your, or get me your feedback anyways. After on October 17th, I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear what everybody has to say. Um, it's going to be a really, really exciting few weeks ahead, I think. So uh, let's keep the party going. Um, let's keep everybody as informed as we can. I would encourage everybody to pop over to Matchstick and, hey, Rian, man, right on, brother. <laughs> right on. Um, Rian, everybody, a big hand for Rian. He's the one who uh, recommended the Sunshine Blue Dream, and by gum, did he uh, do a goddamn good job. So uh, thanks so much, man. I uh, really appreciate that. So everybody, get me your feedback if, after October 17th. If you've tried LP Cannabis already, get me your feedback now. If you are a grower yourself or you know a grower and you want your, uh, your cannabis to be put up next to some of the LP stuff, um, let me know. If you want me to try a strain that you just are unwilling to pay $16, $17 a gram for, let me know. Let's get in there. Um, but it's time we start really providing some positive criticism and some positive feedback so we can start getting some wicked cannabis across Canada in the hands of 
everybody out there. Last bit of public service announcement. I suspect the top leaf is going to be about four months out. And this is rumors again. This is not having spoken with them. About four months out from legalization. So we're looking at October to November, December, January, February. About February, maybe for Valentine's Day. Wouldn't that be nice? We'll have top leaf back. But they will be coming back. And this gives me hope. House of the Great Gardener, who was sold at uh, the Village Bloomery. This gives me hope. I'll reveal where he's at at this point. And I mean, unless you want to Google it yourself. But uh, if you don't know who this person is, Google him. House of the Great Gardener. Um, and find out where he's going. You'll be uh, maybe not pleasantly surprised, but you'll be surprised. So um, lots of great things coming up. Um, if there's anything you guys need, let me know if there's any opinions you need or if there's anything you want me to try, anything you want me to talk about, anything fucking stupid you've seen out there that you want me to uh, kind of go after with a pitchfork and a torch, I'm more than happy to do that. I love lighting fires. I love matches. I love burning things, especially these. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much and enjoy the next five days. I will definitely be back. Um, get in touch. Keep in touch. Let's keep this party going. Oh, fucking thing.